Hi everyone. So in this uh, session, I'm going to talk about something. Uh, I am not sure if a lot of people have uh, experienced this or they want to do this. But uh, in my uh, like last couple of months, I uh, came across this and I wanted to share. So it's called a din, din right docker and docker pattern so why what is docker and docker so normally just right for example if you're running your clusters in a kubernetes environment and then you have normal you know in a normal control plane three managers and you have worker nodes so just to uh, give a you know ba background right so normally you'll have a docker file this is just a sample docker file so you will have a docker file with the base image which is Ubuntu in this case and you will run the update commands and just some command and entry point. So this is your sample docker file and what you'll do is you'll use docker build to build it then it will become an image it will, you can see using docker images and then you can run the image. And you can also push you know you can do docker push and push to your private registry or a public registry wherever you want. This is and then this image will be what will be running inside. This is a worker node. So this image will be running inside a pod. So in this scenario, I'm just showing like four worker nodes, but there can be as many you want. And the worker node is basically a VM virtual machine, which is a host. It has to have some kind of a runtime environment. So normally um, it's container D, Docker, these are the common. So Docker also is the latest Kubernetes 1.24 doesn't support Docker. It supports container D. <coughs> Sorry. But, um, excuse me. But uh, it has to have Docker running and then the pod gets deployed. Uh, or a container which is running inside the pod it gets deployed and it uses the container runtime of the host so this is a normal scenario happy scenario right now what is dint dint is if you have to run these similar docker commands inside the container which means the container which is already running you know uh, a docker right when you start the container it already you started using docker right and inside the container when you exec in the container you can do curl commands or whatever your application you can run a python app and then you can you know do some testing so but instead of that what if you want to do docker inside docker so the scenarios why you would want to do that is most of the uh, scenarios use case comes as as part of the ci pipeline so if for example you're using um, you want to do uh, some unit testing or you want to uh, build a pipeline and it's as part of the pipeline you want to do some docker commands and that pipeline right and and if and if your clus cluster is running those um, uh, you know if it's jenkins or any kind of um, tool so then it has to have it has to support a pattern which is called ding which means docker in docker so there are two patterns which are very popular one of them is d-o-o-n-d -O -O that's called don't and one of them is docker and docker which is didn't so i am in this scenario explaining d-i-n-d because but uh, uh, both of them have different uh, and i've provided the links over here and it's been discussed very uh, nicely in the lower link in the Appletics uh, Docker Kubernetes part two. He has a part one where he, he has explained it. But basically, uh, the whole use case is if you want to run Docker commands inside your container, right? So that's the whole use case. And how you go about doing is then, then uh, how do you do it, right? So you will have to, so what will you need? So because your Docker or your container D is running on the host, it is not running inside the container because what is running inside the container is the, your application and the libraries that you put it. That's it. There is no Docker there. But if you have to run Docker inside the container, which is Docker and Docker, then you have to have a base image that will support running Docker. So it can be, so Docker official hub. So if I, um, go here this is the docker official hub right if you do it's hub.docker.com and if you just go here and search for docker or if you search for dint d-i-n-d you will see multiple images see there is a dint rootless there is a dint uh, the latest image and it does not have any vulnerabilities right so this is something that if you want to simply you know just do a doc so your base image you can use the dint image so what dint is if you look at this image it has uh, it has docker itself right so it has docker uh, a server i mean uh, so it has the docker running inside it so if you see over here 
it has this it has the client and it it's run on alpine latest 3.18 and on top of it it it's running a docker version so it installed the docker itself on the as part of the image so that's why when you pull the image and when you run it inside the container then it you can actually then exec in that container and you can do docker build anything else you can do docker run you can do docker image so that's the first step to it so if you go back and these are the two so this is our, this article explains it so i'm not going to uh, so if you can see right so there are three scenarios which i was talking about so first one is do d o o d which is basically in this case you will have to mount the docker.soc so docker docker.soc is a socket that runs on every host that allows the docker to connect right docker daemon uh, uses it to connect and that's why it runs but the limitation of this method is if for example you are you, you have a cluster for example in amazon e aws which does not after uh, 1.24 if it if it does not support 1.22 i think if it does not support uh, running docker then this will not work because you won't have docker running so your so your image will not be able so your container will not be able to connect to the host and this has also security concerns because you're connected to the host docker daemon so the other method is the dint so this is the one that i mentioned right so in the case of dint you do not need to have a docker socket so in the case of a din din you don't have to mount so let me explain so in this case you can simply run a din image you can just pull an image and run it and then you can directly x now it will be running in a privilege mode of course right because you're running docker daemon you have a server and client both running inside your image you know, inside your container and then when you exec into that image you will be able to do a docker ps you'll be able to again do a docker pull alpine or uh, any stuff like that so if we talk about what dean is what is it doing is that you have a docker uh, host right this is your host it's running container d your docker whatever you know it now it's not dependent on the host because your container or a you know or a container inside your pod is running docker daemon you know so it's already a part of because it was a part of the base image which was din that we are using here so now you can go inside and you can run the docker command so let me go and show run some commands let me let me pull a din image and then i'll run some commands to it okay so in this case uh, okay so this i'm i am running the command docker run uh, minus minus name din test right so uh, so this is the name of my container when it runs but the image i'm pulling is din so this is something that i showed you and this is uh, from here right so uh, docker official hub has docker din images and also din rootless so din is basically now if you see it's running in a privileged mode so if the security does not allow or if um, this is just a poc environment but if it's not allowed then you probably then you need to explore the rootless option which is also one of the images provided by the docker hub it's an official image it has some vulnerabilities high ones so try to see if you have if you can find rootless without uh, vulnerabilities but the one i'm using right now is this one the, uh, so i just did a uh, uh, so once i run this then what i'm expecting is once my container runs then i will be able to exec inside the container and then i will be able to uh, do a docker pull or docker pull any alpine image or ubuntu any other image from the docker hub or in your registry and then i'll be able to do docker images and I, if i have a docker file i'll be able to build so this is usually so this will be very helpful right if you're running a pipeline and you want to uh, pull an image you want to run some tests on it and then you want to push it to something more normally like jenkins and other pipelines that's what they require and they are this so this pattern is commonly used for that so um uh yeah just give a couple of more minutes okay so uh, the image is downloaded so now if i do docker images right crap for then or docker then you see i have the latest it's i have the din image and it's running so if i even do docker ps it is running right because i run uh, i did a run command with the din test name so that's my image din test that's its name right din test okay so now what if i exec into it docker exec dash it okay let me do 7 a c c uh, sh now i'm inside the 
uh, din container so now if i do docker ps here right normally this is not possible right like if you run a, uh, if you download an alpine image and you run a container you cannot do but now in our case docker is running inside it that's why it's different see if you can see docker daemon is running a container d and docker is running inside my um, image so in this container i have docker now if you have to pull now so for example i have to pull an alpine latest image then i will be able to pull it over here and then if i want to do a docker build if i have a docker file i'll be able to do that if i have to do um, you know docker run i'll be able to run a container within a container so that is the beauty of it but it has its own security restrictions and it has should, should be used you know most likely for sandbox for testing of a pipelines so in a very controlled environment because you're running the container as root right so it can it can affect it can cause catastrophic effects you know if somebody hacks into it and somebody gets access to it but what i wanted to show is that how convenient it is so you can run docker commands you know inside it and if your use case is something like that then it's something that you can explore so now if i see docker images previously when i did there was no image right but now because i just pulled i have a docker alpine image running in it and if i just do a docker run dash d um, what was the command to run docker image d dash name dash d dash dash name alpine so if i want to run alpine So if I do docker ps minus a because it probably there's nothing in it so it ran for a while if you can see but it exited because I, I'm not I mean it's just an alpine base image so if you want to run it you can have a docker file so you can also do you can have a docker file and you can do a docker build right so see if events if you have a docker file you can do build inside it and you can do whatever you want and you can run you and you can test it and then you can push it if you have an you know any local uh, private register you can push it there or you can also of course current you'll have to log in via credentials but uh, and then or you can push to the public docker hub so that was what um, my idea was to show so if i have docker ps nothing is running i will exit out of it and if i remove if i do docker images crap didn't so i'm going to remove it because it's a big image rmi docker didn't burn it i hope this uh, on my dash f I'll force it so I removed it I also have another din I'll remove it but basically I if you got the idea right so that was my whole uh, point so I'm going to stop the video and if you have uh, you go to the uh, so the links I shared in the I will put it is as when I upload the video they are very good links if you want to explore also